up in any program. The world has block parties. I heard, I've never been to one, a tailgate party. You have a, a party on the tailgate of a truck. I don't know. They have all kinds of things. We used to live it up uh, before we were Christians. So why not enjoy ourselves in the Lord? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Before I even say anything, I was talking to a friend of yours and a good friend of mine, my former leader, Brother Buddy Perry, said, Brother Casino, be sure you give the people and brother and sister England my greetings. And he said, Tell them thank you for praying for Sister Perry. She's home, she's doing better, she still needs prayer. Thank you so much. <coughs> Brother Perry was my uh, my leader, my boss, my pastor, my counselor, my everything <laughs> for years. And he's still my buddy and my friend, and I have a lot of confidence in him. And he loves you folks. He told me a lot of good things about you. And they were all true. <laughs> a lot of things about your past. I, me and my wife did not know that we we're going to have three surprises. Now, you folks might know them, but we didn't expect them to be here. Sister Will, that was a shocker. Brother Elijah, young man, I was surprised to even see me. And tonight, Sister Cole, a lot of memories. <laughs> she was the teacher of our three children and probably most of the children in the, our home church as a teacher. And she heard this guy speak once or twice and he's back, so <laughs> that's encouraging. <laughs> Very encouraging. God bless you. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you so much for the everything you put into the parsonage. We thank you for the first and we thank you for the second. <laughs> We're trying not to have third. But thank you for the first and the, today we have second. And they're all very good. I like to see a church work together. Right. Unity. Yeah. I like the father and son combination. Yeah. Yeah. Right. My children all three of them are musical, but uh, we're not a combination. I can't help them with the music. I just go like this, I go like this. <laughs> I like to see father and son combination. Amen. And the sisters that sang, and those that do things behind the scenes that we know nothing about. Right. I always think people that do things behind the scenes for revival that no one knows anything about. It helps. Uh, when I was in the world, I was involved in sports a little bit. I was a coach of different sports. And I'm going to tell you, you can't win a championship without teamwork. Mm -hmm. right. Same mm -hmm. way, spiritual for the kingdom of God. That's good. Yeah. Right. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord. All hearts clear? You sure?
Amen. 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 Some things God did that were impossible for man. Mm -hmm. He changed that God and this order. Those were impossible things for man, right. for human, right. but not for God. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't have any sayings tonight, but I have some scripture. Yes. Sayings are good. Uh, people telling you they're praying for you is very good. Yeah, I can't live without that. But my best encouraging things, I have some of my closest friends encourage me when I'm down. But uh, you know what I think, Brother England, my closest, my my most uh, direct way to get encouraged is scripture. Amen. Right. Amen. So I got some scripture that you all know, but I just feel directed to share them with you. It might help someone tonight. It's going to help me if it doesn't help anybody. I have precepts and promises together. <clears throat> Precept, bring all the ties. I will open the windows of heaven. We found it to be so good, Catholic. We told it. The England's a little bit uh, today, $30,000 in debt, and we got saved, paid our tithes, walked into life, and in a couple of years, God opened the windows of heaven. Amen. And we did it, and there's nothing wrong with us now. We did it. We didn't even know the name Dave Ramsey. We did it without him. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong. He's probably a good man, very smart in economics and saving. And all. I know that. But we did it, even, you okay? Before yeah. we never read the book. <laughs> Precept, take my yoke upon you, and ye shall find rest. Precept, if ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat of the good of the land. Precept, delight thyself with the Lord, promise, he will give you the desires of thy heart. I found that to be so. Amen. Precept, I think says the word quote, in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Amen. Precept, seek him, my favorite verse, in the Bible, the first time I was ever asked to speak, I'm just going to say, just a little devotion to young people who came in. This was my verse. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Praise first the Lord. First. Right. Precept, they that walk in my statutes and keep my ordinances, and do them, promise, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God. Amen. Amen. You can't get more encouraging than that. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. I praise the Lord. We had a good day. Brother, sister, England are treating us so good. And I told you they gave us, they really gave us all of their house, but we only took half. We gave them the other half. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, I was talking to an old time warrior. I call him an old time warrior. I think he's 88, 29. But Alan Lepper said so many things about. Brother, sister, so many good things about brother, sister, England. I, I have a lot of confidence in people who've been there and done that. Brother Lefter has been there and done that. I called him because he was having physical difficulties. He said, where are you? And I told him where I was. He said, oh, he said, you were a good man. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Uh, I have friends who are members of the world that when people heard their names, they say you're in good hands or a good man. So I appreciate it. When I have friends that people respond, you're in good hands, you're a good man. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, Sister. I almost called you by your main name, but I won't do that. Because we used to for years, Sister Cole, my wife told me you last time. We knew her, you know how long ago? Before she changed her name. <laughs> <laughs> we knew her when we have children now, we have grandchildren. We have children that have children that are the age of the students she had. My grandchildren, okay? She told their parents, <laughs> three of my three children and many others. And she did a good job. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Yes. Glory be to God. Luke chapter 11, <clears throat> reading verse one. And then when you find it, I've never really lose, but when you find it, go to Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 and 20. Praise the Lord. Amen. Luke 11, verse 1. After you find the doors, we able stand with me for the reading of God's word and remain standing for prayer, please. And it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, 
when he sees one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. Matthew 28, verse 19 and 20. Jesus said, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. Brother Darrell, we will you pray, please. Lord, we're gathered at my house this evening. <clears throat> we thank you we could be here. We pray that thou will shut us in these next few moments, and we're about to hear of thy word. We ask that thou will open it to our understanding. Touch the lips of the speaker tonight. We pray just the way that he has need of that you apply the truth to each one of our hearts the way that we need and it helps to walk in the light thereof and have thy way in our midst we ask for Jesus' sake. Amen. Thank you, baby seated. Believe it or not, before I was a Christian, I wanted, before I understood God's call in my life, I wanted to be a teacher. You know why? It sounds silly. Because I thought it was a great job. You work 8, 8.30, to three o'clock, you get three months off. You have the choice to get paid nine months or twelve months, <laughs> and uh, you do all the talking, they do all the listening, and you become and you're the boss. I thought that was a great job. <laughs> in my, at the end of the third semester, I think it was in college, I changed my mind. <laughs> I wanted to be an art teacher. Then I wanted to be a psychologist. Then I wanted to be this. Then I wanted to be that. But God had different plans. I found out. <clears throat> In Luke, I read in your hearing, uh, the, the, a disciple of Jesus, one of his best friends, said, teach us, teach us to pray. I like people that have a teachable spirit. Amen. About you. Amen. Amen. In Matthew, Jesus said, go and teach. So if I put that together, <clears throat> before we teach anything, I think it's good if we learn something. That's right. Does that make sense, Billy? Sure. It's good. To teach, we must know something. Mm -hmm. I want to be like the blind leading the blind. Yeah. If I had to uh, live my life all over again, I would get saved as early as possible. And I'd also get a lot more education than I have. And I mean that. Okay? <clears throat> but uh, I'm trying to learn as I go along. Mm -hmm. My wife, because of different circumstances or whatever, quit school. When I married her, she was 18. She does more reading than most people I know. She has learned, so she doesn't like me to do this. She thinks I'm pregnant, I'm not pregnant, I'm pregnant, I'm the Lord. She does more learning than most people I know. My mother used to read and read. It is good to have a desire to learn. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's right. I try to learn as much as I can about it, as much as I can. Now, some things are more important than others. Sure. My text is, I named it the need for divine instruction. Mm, There's a lot of things I need to learn, but the most th important thing in my life to learn is God's will for my life. Mm. Lord, teach us to pray. And then he said, well, he said, go and teach. Mm. For me to teach anybody anything, if he chooses to use me, is for me to learn something about the Lord before I can share it with somebody else. That's good. I told Danny, so I don't forget, we all need teaching one time or another in our life. Did you know we can learn something for someone or something new? Mm -hmm. Now I have met, I, I read in your area the first night, I have read to you one of my favorite things. It's what you learn after you know it all that counts. I have met some people that know it all. But that's okay, I didn't bust the bubble, I don't think whatever they want. But I don't, I still, every day I learn something. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's good. We all can learn. I went to work in the Carpenter's Union, and they put a young man with me. He was about 21, and I was like 36. So in my mind, I'm the carpenter. He's the kid. The kid knew more than the old man. He did. He was a crackerjack, top-notch carpenter. He said, what do you do? Do you say, kid, you can't teach? He would say, Peter, I see you're doing this way. Can I make a suggestion? We can do it. And it made sense. He had more experience than me. <clears throat> It's good to have a teachable spirit. Amen. On our way to heaven, it's good to have a teachable spirit. Amen. The Lord wants Amen. to teach us. Right. It's good. Now I'm thinking of one person. That one time, 
I preached a little message on when, and that person went to my wife and said something like this. Oh, I'm serving the Lord, I forget how many years, but let's say 15, 20 years, before the preacher. There's nothing wrong with that, that's good. Except, I heard that before, there's nothing that he can tell me that I don't know. I said to him, I made a statement that I'm not a prophet, I don't claim to be. But I made a statement, I'm talking about teachable spirit. I made a statement, I said to my wife, that's a dangerous ground, not because this was the preacher, to say that again. There's always something we can learn. Amen. I learned, listen to a song. Amen. I learned when somebody testifies. Amen. If we keep our heart open and want to learn more about the way of the Lord. Mm -hmm. But that person said that. I said to my wife, they were on dangerous ground spiritually. Mm -hmm. Fast forward, years later, we pray for that person's salvation because they lost that regard. Mm -hmm. Not a teachable spirit. Right. We did. There's nobody on the sound of my voice. And I know I'm not, and my wife is not a brother, sister, or not, but, and I'm sure you're not. There's nobody that has arrived anywhere. That's right. Right. We, we arrive at destination, mm -hmm. at a plane, in an airport, at a bus stop, we arrive at somebody's house, but we haven't arrived anywhere spiritually. Now, there are people who I look up to and are my spiritual heroes, but they haven't arrived. You know why? Mm -hmm. We run the way to heaven, and we got a devil in this world, and a sin cursed world, and I'm always willing to learn more of what God has for me. Amen. That's good. Right. Praise the Lord. Now, there are many tools for teaching. It is that they, they, got, they got stuff to teach that I, I know nothing about. And uh, so there are many ways to teach. But I'm going to tell you, there are, there are tools to teach that boggle the mind. But the best that I found, and I believe in all of the helps, the best tool for teaching I found to, to know the will of God in my life is God's Word. Amen. I read other books and other things. I listen to other people. We just sure. went to a, a little seminar. It was free. Brother England and Sister Kathleen have something in common. I, I think he beats her. She's a bargain hunter. We like three things. <laughs> My wife knows what gas station at what time almost. I'm just exaggerating a little bit. Shouldn't exaggerate that so God. But she's, she'll say, I say, honey, I got a full of things gas. Where do I go? She says, not that one. That one is Tuesday. Today is Monday. Go to that gas station. She knows. We, they, okay? <laughs> she comes home and says, guess how much I saved today. And she'll tell me she's clearance, sales. I found somebody who gives a good combination. His name is Dr. Robin. <laughs> <laughs> They can save money, these two. <laughs> it is the best tool, God's holy word, yeah. the Bible, to teach us. Yeah. Now, I have some points. I don't want to tell you how many. Should I tell you how many? Are? <laughs> By the way, this, this message, B.J. Walker, I heard, made this statement many years ago. I've never made it, but I'm going to make it now. He said something like this. He said, this message is in the incubator stage. He said, I'll right. preach, this is what he said in Victory Go Camp, B.J. Walker. He said, I'm going to preach a message. He said, but I want to tell you, he said, a friend of his said, B.J., you don't learn a message really good until you preach it a whole bunch of times. He said something like 15 times. <laughs> so this is only my second time, and I'm looking at this message from a different angle. And then I heard him preach at the IHC, and uh, years and years later. This message is in the incubator stage, but I think it's very important. In Psalm 143, verse 10, is my first point. Some of my points have, uh, actually all my points have scripture. I like scripture. I found out in England when talking to people, especially sinners, when they question, when they want to know something, they want to know something, I'm confused. I can give my opinion, and some of them respect me, I like me, especially my brothers. But when I give them scripture, they can't argue with me. Because that's what was done to me. Amen. If I ask somebody, say, why do you do this? Why don't you do this? Why do you act like that? Why do When they gave me scripture, I didn't argue with anybody. I said, well, that's God's word. Right. Mm -hmm. That's good. God has a way of penetrating the soul. Mm -hmm. Psalm 143, verse 10 says, Teach me to do thy will. For thou art my God, thy spirit is good. Lead me into the land of uprightness. I wrote four things down real quick <clears throat> under that. It's good to say to the Lord, Lord, I don't know. Teach me. Right. 
To be teachable, I wrote number one, A. A, to be teachable in the Christian life, we must have some form of discipline. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Sister Cole, I almost said you made me. I'm so used to looking at you saying you made me. We told our children, when Sister Cole teaches you in the Christian day school that she taught, you listen to her. Did they? Good. <laughs> Even though they're 41, 35, 39, and 35, we would go back and represent. <laughs> Don't talk while the teacher talks. Listen to Anna, okay? There, there is some kind of discipline. There should be in the Christian life. To be a good student, there has to be a little discipline. Yeah. When I went to public school, they gave me homework. I don't know if they still do those things. Did you get homework? Oh, sure. Okay. He would have fit right in. That's one of my teachers. Some of them gave heavy homework. Do you know, I found out later on, some of the teachers that I had were very nice. I liked them then. One of them, I remember my best teacher, his name was John Rundlow. He said, some of you boys and girls won't like me now, but you're, when you're my age, you, you'll thank the Lord for me. He was one of the hardest teachers I had. He says, because I, I said, Mr. Rundlow, it's so nice out and I like to play ball. Why don't you give us all these hours of homework? He said, you'll thank me someday. I really did. He's the best teacher I've ever he, he cared about me, I think, more than others. Another, he, uh, he cared about me. So, and he said there has to be some discipline in life in order to learn. Right. Sometimes, um, in the everyday routine things of life, spiritually, sometimes it doesn't come easy. Like I said the other day, some days I get up and I have a bad sinusitic. And my mind says, and the devil suggests things. Well, get to work, do this, do this, do that, do that. But the Lord said, spend some time with me first. Amen. Right. That's good. Yeah. And it doesn't always work that way, 99% of the time. It does, I mean, every now and then, most of the time it works. But sometimes if there's an emergency, I do something else. Sometimes I get a phone call, I got to rush to the house, I got to do something. Mm -hmm. But there has to be some kind of discipline. Good. How's my discipline? How's your discipline? It's a question. In the Christian world, there has to be. People that are good students, they tell me. I was never a teacher. I wanted to be, but I, I wasn't. The people, people that are good students, they tell me I'm disciplined people. They study, they do their papers on time, so forth and so on. To be a good student, to learn, there has to be some kind of confidence. I have confidence in God's holy word. Amen. Amen. I have confidence of, of those that the Lord put in my path that have authority over me. Yes. Now in the world, I might not agree with something, but I pray for it, by the way, I believe in that. Mm -hmm. I was in a camp in some place, once and we had a president that I didn't vote for, and uh, but I respect those in authority. By the way, mm -hmm. I don't yeah. know if you agree with that. And he this brother came and gave me big brochures and said, "Could you spread them out to your local church?" And he was making fun of the president. I didn't agree with the president that we had at that time, but I prayed for him. I did not vote for him, but I said, "Brother, thank you, but I don't want that because I don't want to make fun of like the president of the United States." Good, right. But spiritually speaking, that's in the world as secular. Mm -hmm. But spiritually speaking, we have to have confidence. When the disciples said, Jesus teach us, Lord, teach us to pray. I think you have confidence that Jesus can teach you. Amen. Right. Amen. Right. I told you, I learned from, and I'm not just saying, I mean it. I learned from Brother Eagle just talking to him at the dinner table. Mm -hmm. Confidence. I have confidence that God says what he says and then we'll do it. <clears throat> Amen. Praise the Lord. I have confidence in all those precepts because they come in a promise. Thank the Lord. Praise His name. I can stay there for the rest of the time. <laughs> teach me to do that will, O oh Lord. <clears throat> Amen. When you're teachable and you're learning, you are satisfied mm -hmm. and you can you have contentment. I know that God's word is true. Okay, let me say it this way. My way. I found the right way, and I found the old-fashioned way. I believe in holiness of heart. I'm not looking for another way. How about you? <laughs> That's the only way I know to say it. I can say some other words, but... I was saved. I started just feeling him, doing a little preaching every day. And a good friend of ours was in that home. She was a sister in the Lord of us, and she said to me, and she meant well, but I didn't agree with her. 
She said, Peter, you don't know enough. And I didn't, by the way. She was right. She said, you don't know enough about a lot of world religions. I, I knew a very little. I read a couple of books, but I didn't study world religions. She said, are you going to know when you talk to people, when you come across the right, the wrong one? Let me show you what I did. She was in England. Now, we're still friends. I haven't seen in many years. I called her by her first name. I said, sister, thank you for the advice. I know very little besides Catholicism. I said, I don't know about so many, there was at least 300 worlds with it. I said, I don't know. She said, well, I don't know the difference. I said, but I found the right one. <laughs> Good. I'm not looking for another. Yeah. So I compared them to that one. Yeah. I don't know your people. I, I'm happy in the Lord. I found the, the, uh, the right religion. Yeah. So I'll know when the wrong one comes along. Amen. I may not understand the Nordic doctrine, but I compare it to the genuine. Sure. Yeah. Good. Praise the Lord. My wife tastes something. She says, mm -mm. I told the, the, the English today, I can taste, I can have a cup of coffee. Some people go, decaf, sanka, whatever. No, some, there's so many coffees. But the English has different. We have a, a daughter who has a father who has coffee, import, expensive coffee. And they can tell them, but I taste coffee. Coffee! <laughs> I, I know if it's decaf or not, but the way I act, but if I'm after, if it has the caffeine in it, I can't stay still. <laughs> but that's secular things. Mm -hmm. But I can tell when I found the right religion, this is what I can pay everybody else for. I don't have to know more. I wish I did know a lot more. And I am trying to learn more about other religions and what other people believe. But I found the right one. I'm not looking for another one. It's the one that Isaiah said, and it's the way of holiness. Amen. Isaiah said, under the inspiration of God, he said, if Peter Castellino was a fool, a foolish person, he said, still, you shouldn't make a mistake, you shouldn't hear me, am I right? He said, that's the right one. Amen. So I'm satisfied and I'm content. You know why? Because when we start to get curious, that's a devil's device. Mm -hmm. To get a little curious. Mm -hmm. And the other thing we need is to be a good student, to be teachable under the Lord. Is every now and then we meet people that don't have determination. We need a little determination. Right. That's good. Amen. This is what I believe. I'm going to revival. I'm reading my Bible today. I'm going to go visit that shut in. I'm going to bake the cake. Whatever they think. A little determination. It's going mm -hmm. to be determined. Some right. people said, oh, Peter. I don't know what kind of preacher you're going to make because you're a stubborn Italian. <laughs> I know the ladies. Sister Cole, I remember. remember Sister Oakley in that church? You remember her? The shouter? She said, Peter, I'm glad God called, me to, called you to preach. She said, you got strong. But I said, I'm sorry, Sister Oakley. She said, don't apologize. So let God use that strong will and determination. Let him sanctify you. Good. She said, God works through your personality. Because I used to say, Sister Sister Oakley, a friend of mine used to testify that if you probably know what it is, he used to get up and say, I mean, when he got done, and I'm not making fun, he sounded like Shakespeare. And he was Italian, he wasn't English. But he testified so calm and so relaxed. I'm trying to make a point that you stand with me. He got up and he would say something like, I thank the Lord, the Lord saves and sanctifies me, and so forth. And it sounded so good and people enjoyed it. I used to get up, and I still do. If I'm asked to testify, I'm a pastor, I don't. I don't uh, just jump up and testify because I'm always doing talking, so usually when I'm in the service, let somebody else do. I used to get up and say, I'm glad I'm, I'm saved from my sins. I'm glad the Lord saved me, saved my wife. I'm glad I'm not an alcoholic. I was ever, yeah, and sit down. And, and the devil used to get to me and brother and say, Why don't you sound so polished like your friend? So I had trouble. So I went to Sister Oakley's house. She's the lady. You remember that? Little short lady. She started out church. And I said, Sister Oakley, something's bothering me. And listen to what profound statement she said. I just I said that you know. I said, why don't I testify like that brother, like somebody else? She said, sit down, Peter. Yes, she said, okay. She was in the 80s then. She said, do you like I'm teachable? She said, do you like I my friend? Yes. She said, let the Lord sanctify you, and you still like ice cream. God, <laughs> now listen to me, God won't change your personality. But he'll use your own personality Good. once it's sanctified for his use. Does that make any sense? Amen. It doesn't Amen. mean anything. Amen. 
Brother England, there's one person out there. Sister England, there's another person. You heard a little bit last night. Sister Castellino, there's another person. Brother, the old man, remember the old man? There's another personality. <laughs> but do you know we can't work together? Sure. To the glory of God. Praise the Lord. God uses all personalities once they're sanctified. And we surrender our will to His. We could be like the crayons. Crayons are diverse colors, right? They live in the same box. <laughs> and they get along. Right. Okay. Point number one in the other. Psalm 25, verse 4. Show me thy ways, O Lord. Teach me. Again, teach me thy path. Teach me to walk in thy path. Did you know God has a, a particular, a certain, a special pet for you? Yeah. And he has one for me. Yeah. And I'm not going to kick against the pricks. God has a pet for my life. Sometimes he'll explain to me, believe me, and sometimes I don't know exactly what he wants me to do, but I know I see the pet, and he just says, keep your hand in my hand. Mm -hmm. uh, he knows what's good for me. What's ahead of me, what's behind me, what's on the left, what's the right, better than I do. So I trust Him. That's good. God has a bed just for you. God knows what bed is best for us. We go places sometimes that we've never been before. And my wife uses the GPS. GPS is so good. I told you the other day, one of the greatest inventions, especially for me. I'm not very good with geography and roads. My wife says, Well, you don't pay attention because she does a lot of driving because of her. Uh, car sickness. She says, if you would drive on, you would learn more. I begin to like her driving me, relaxing. <laughs> <laughs> GPS, every now and then my wife says, I'm not listening to that lady. I said, be careful, she might be listening. The lady <laughs> on our GPS. Sometimes we go places and we go to a church and we've never been before and they say, just put this address in your GPS and it takes us to the wrong place. Brother, Sister Perry, we had a wedding in our church and he wanted to come and he was invited. And the, his GPS took him the wrong way and he missed the wedding. And sometimes my wife says, who in the world, I, we don't know this lady's name, we have a lady, his boss. And my wife says, that GPS lady doesn't know. She'll shut off the GPS, go her way, and we get it. I'm going to tell you, GPS is really good. I love it. I can't live without it. Even though I'm not really good at modern technology. But because of my weakness with roads and what they are, but they're going to find that out. <laughs> I'm even better than somebody's giving direction. I gotta really pay attention. GPSs can make mistakes. God knows. God's the best map maker of your life. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if that's correct English, but he's a map maker. He, he has a map for my life and for your life. Right. He even's got one for the ones we're praying for. For the lost loved ones, right. for the neighbors, for the friends, for the down and out, for the prostitute, the drug addict, for the gym that I went to see that could. Praise Jim, the Lord. as of Monday, could not talk. Somebody asked me to go visit my went to visit him. I never met Jim before, 35 years old, severe car accident. Mouth wide shut, <clears throat> one eye shut. He was in a coma nine, nine days. His uh, aunt and uncle came to church and we prayed and they came. That was Sunday morning, Sunday night, they came to church. They don't regularly come to church. They came to church and said, Church, I just want to tell you it worked. I said, What worked? We knew it. I wanted them to know. Debbie and Mike, they were about our age. They said, It worked, preacher. The church prayed. And now tonight he came out of the coma. I said, Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Anyway, but I tell you, God has a path for Jim. As far as I know, I talked to him. He's not a Christian. But he kept his heart open. I asked him if I could pray. I put my hand on him. He can only go like this means yes, or like this means no. He's very physically, as of last month, as soon as I get back, I'm going to go visit. God has a path and something lined up for Jim. He can use Jim for the glory of God. Amen. Amen. He just wants Jim to surrender to him. And that's why we pray. Amen. God has a path for my lost loved ones, your lost loved ones. Now, let me tell you this before we go to the next point. The enemy wants to distract us off our path. Yeah. Right. I used to, when I was in the world, one of the things I like to do is run. And contrary to a lot of people's opinion, I went places where they think, they said, please tell us a juicy story, how you make phone calls and make people disappear. They said that I was an organized crime. They're just joking. 
One young man in the camp, in the Holland's camp, tapped me on the shoulder and said, is your name Peter Casalino? I said, yes. He said, oh, please, tell me one of those stories how you let people kill. I went, what? <laughs> Some rumors went, I said, I don't like that, I despise that. I'm a Christian. They said, no, I know, before you were a Christian. I said, no, I never was involved in those things. You know, I said, I came in a sense, but not those kind of sins. Not make phone calls, I make people just speak. God bless Jesus. <laughs> <sighs> But there's an enemy that wants to distract us off the path. Mm, right. I used to run cross country. I don't know if it's something I fellas. It's a different type of running. You run for miles and you run through paths. Sometimes you got to jump over a log, sometimes a little stream, sometimes rocks. And there's things, a branch may hit you in the face. And there's things that distract you off your path. Mm. We have an enemy of our soul. You have one and I have one. It's the same one. And I'm not giving him glory. I'm just telling you, watch out for him. Be wise. Right. He wants to distract you off the path that God has for you. Yes, sir. Yeah. And he's been working on it for a few thousand years, but we're not ignorant, the Bible says, to his devices. He kind of uses the same tricks all the time. They seem to work, I guess. Psalm 27, 11. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me to a plain path because of mine enemies. I put down an A and B. A is... Things are not as complicated as they seem to be. One day, I am not a Christian by that one, I'm probably a believer. I probably know what I'm talking about more than anybody. But I try to save money, so it was either I put the electric fan up in the parsonage, a new fan, or we call the Christian and spend a lot of money. I said, there we go, so my wife, pray for me. So I said, oh, this is easy. I said, let me open the instructions. I open a piece of paper this big. You know, then you fold, unfold it. It became this big. I was like, that was down, he said. And then it became, and it got bigger, and bigger. And then it was, one side was English. I turned around, so it became, well, I used to bring you to churches. It was like, about this big. <laughs> I, brother, I believe in the structure. I put a lot of things together. It was about some instructions. And what I believe, I had a friend of mine who taught me a little bit of maintenance for 14 years. He died one day. I said, Bill, why are these directions so complicated. He said, the ones that are good are good. He said, but every now and then, you get somebody that writes directions and put things together that never put anything together. <laughs> he said, don't say more. Anyway, and it got bigger and bigger and bigger. And it confused me. I read everything. And I couldn't find this. Like, so I closed the directions, put them away. I'm not talking about going against the book. That direction didn't work. It only confused me. Mm-hmm. And I looked at it and I saw, correct me, but if I'm wrong. I saw a white wire, a black wire, that makes sense? Then I saw a blue wire and red wire for the light, and a brown wire green. So I said, wait a minute, maybe I'm wrong, even though I'm from another planet, another country. I put those colors together. I said, how do you look? Professional electrician. <laughs> That's just a little humor. Things are not as complicated as this. Some people make the way of salvation. I've heard it. It's true. I've heard it explained to a sinner. I've been next to people that did their best and uh, they meant well the motive was but it was so complicated yes sir right no. i had the privilege of praying a little bit at an altar prayer in revivals and came in and the privilege of with some people especially uh, men and young boys and i heard some things and i felt like once in a while i feel led to talk to someone i felt like in one instance to say my friend it's like this and you might say, this is elementary. Some people, that's the only way you're going to get better. Mm-hmm. I said, it's like this. Jesus wants to forgive you of all the bad things you've done. If you ask him and really mean that you don't want to do it again, he'll give you the strength to live a new life. He said, is that all? <laughs> Praise the Lord. I could have talked about the map. Right. I could have read First Corinthians, Revelation. He wouldn't have known what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. That comes later. Good, right. good. That's good. If somebody made it complicated, I won't be here today. Mm-hmm. They told me, Jesus loves you, Peter, and he wants to forgive you. You are a sinner. They, they, they made me a thousand that said, but he loves you so much, he's willing to forgive you if you just said, that was simple. I understood that part. Right. Thank the Lord. So I put down things are not complicated as they are in our day and age. Do you ever call a, a store, a company, and they say, if you know your party's expansion, that's fine. Then they go, if you know, it takes me about 20 minutes and I'm still talking to a machine. <laughs> it used to be easy. Hello, can I talk to the 
vegetarian. Okay, I doubt I walk. No, it's not like that anymore. 30 minutes just to get through. Right. And then I said, sorry, they're not into it. <laughs> Complicated. I went to Lowe's. We have Lowe's in India. Right. In uh, uh, New Jersey, we didn't have them. We are, we're sophisticated. We have Home Depot's. <laughs> okay, I went to Lowe's the first time I came to India. And I wanted to buy, I don't know what it was exactly, but it was something like this, less than a dollar. 59 cents bolt. Hold on, sir. Uh, all I did is take out the dollar. I put, well, let me. And I'm not making fun of this. There's nothing wrong with that. Receipts. I have a Lowe's, oh, what do they call it? Oh. Milo card. The, re the receipt registers on a card. So six months later, I want to bring some back. I don't have to have the receipt. Milo's, do you have a Milo's card? Yes. You have this, and it took so long. I remember when I was 20, 21, all I did is go to the hardware store say, can I have a number six screw? Here it is. Tick, tick, tick. Give them the dollar. I give them 49 cents. They give me change. I'm out the door. They go fix what they got to fix. <laughs> now it takes me 30 minutes. I get cash registered. <laughs> and I'm like, I understand that. Or sometimes they say, I'm sorry. The computer has a headache. Could you come? Okay, so I'll walk around the store for a hour. I'm busy. I have no time for that. I'm just trying to tell you, I like marketing. But sometimes in the world, people make things so confusing and, and they confound people. And the enemy of our soul, this is my recruit, wants to confound you right. and the sinner and me. He wants to confound us against each other. He wants to confuse us so we lose our way. When I used to run that cross country, I kept my eye at the finish line. Good. Four and a half miles, whatever it was, I kept my eye at the finish line. For praying chicks me, just get up and go. If you fall, get up and go. You gotta keep focused. Even though there's distractions, mm -hmm. some of the distractions are attractive. Mm -hmm. I, I can name some, but I don't have time. Some of the distractions are fame, popularity. Those are enemy's devices. Money, right. materialist. Oh, no, 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 we go. Yeah. I didn't write them down. I told Brother Sister Nicholas, I concentrate. I look, and some people might just say, but I guess you don't sound like you read your messages. Why do you keep looking down? You don't look at us. Well, I concentrate, that's the way I am. It's not because I'm like, I love all of you. <laughs> Psalm 119, verse 12, point number four. Blessed are thou, Lord, teach me thy statutes. So I put down here, God must teach them in order for us to really understand. God's statutes are understood by those who God teaches. Some people don't want to know the law because they want to break it. I like to know what is the law of the land. Mm -hmm. I like to know if you take me Ohio as some laws that I don't want to think about, you know, so I can uh, obey them. Mm -hmm. In the city where my wife was, telling me, was born and raised, if you park your car more than four, listen to this, four hours, after four hours they have a special police, men and women, and they drive around, you can't stay more than four hours in one parking spot. <laughs> So they put a boot, they call it, on your wheel. You pay for the boot, you pay for the towing and a $150 fine, I think. The only way you get around that, you, if you visit me, I would have to give you a pass for four hours. After that, you got to move it. The car, it's so complicated. But I'm, I, so I said to somebody, when we moved away from that town, I said, what happens if somebody's new, a stranger, and comes to this town? They said, the Lord uh, doesn't forgive ignorance. You still... <laughs> So it's good when I go to town, I want to know. But the England man parked, is it okay? Praise the Lord. <laughs> but some people, I like to know the law. Right. Right. That's good. I don't feel the law of God. Mm -hmm. I like to know the boundaries. I like to know we went to Beckley, West Virginia a couple of times. The first one time it was raining, but the left, I don't know if it was driving. He was taking us out to eat. My wife whispered to me in Italian. We, we spoke in tongues in front of brother and sister. Left him. Two of our spiritual heroes. She said, How did they drive over here in bed? What? They were just raining. It was springtime or fall, whatever. It wasn't winter. And uh, brother said, What you say? <laughs> okay. But there was curves and there were signs and there was one of these and one of these and one of those. But I'm glad they had warnings. And God gives us his statue. That's our own good. Amen. I like where it says, Thou shalt not. You know what? It's a warning for me. Peter, don't go there. It is not good for your spiritual life. Thank the Lord. Amen. Amen. I like to know the laws of the land. So I'm breaking. Where are we? You're getting me excited. 
Number four. Number five. This was when I read that verse in your hearing. Luke chapter 11 verse 1. But this is probably most important. Teach me to pray. I really believe, but when prayer comes from the heart and it's worship. I understand that. But I, can I say this before I keep going? I don't think we have any problem here, but I, the Lord told me to emphasize this, so I do what the Lord tells me. I just do what the Lord tells me. I put what is essential in prayer? What's priority? What's the most important? I heard some people pray in public, but they do things that they shouldn't, in a way. I heard somebody that say on the left side, in a public worship service, pray for somebody on the right side, things that they shouldn't say in front of them. Right. Am I right? Right. That's right? How about Lord help so and so? <laughs> we don't have to, when we pray to the Lord in public, we don't have to give somebody social security number and credit card and debit card and everything else. Right. It sounds like I heard something. That's right, brother. I thought, wow, if it was me that you were praying about, I probably would go back to that church. Thank the Lord, it's only once in a blue moon. Mm-hmm. When is a blue moon? I don't know. I'm just making a look. <laughs> but it's once in a blue moon. But anyway, some people really don't know how to pray. So, are you telling people? No. That's not wisdom. Amen. Right. Amen. If you're going to pray for me, don't pray something that will hurt me and never want to make me come back here, especially if I was a sinner. Good. Now I can handle some things. I heard some things when I was a sinner that floored us. Right. Amen. Anyway. That's good. Wait, wait, wait. You're getting me too excited. I got to be careful. Like, I'm a blood pressure medicine. <laughs> what's essential? Priority. Most important. I'll tell you what's important. Salvation. Holiness of heart. Amen. Keeping and staying spiritual. Yes. And, and seek ye first the kingdom of God. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And then. Those are the essential, the most important. Yes. I've heard this. Pastor, preacher, friend, you know. I'm talking about in a public service or not in church setting. I heard. Pray for, now listen, I'm, I'm just going to, without keeping, it's somewhere in this universe this happened. And Sister Catherine, you know, don't you squeal. I heard this. Pray for Harry I hope this one. I, I, I use the example sometimes of names and people say, well, you're talking about me. No. Is there any Harry Adam there? No. Okay. Pray for Harry Adam. Pray for Charlie. And they'll name everything in the book, which is good. But my Bible tells me, my favorite verse is, see ye first the kingdom of God. Mm-hmm. Now, I do pray for my children for materialistic things, for broken cars, and for sick. I do, and I believe we believe in it. Mm-hmm. But number one is spirituality. Amen. Yeah. Exactly. Amen. If one person agrees with me, I'll be encouraged. If nobody agrees with me, yeah. I'll be discouraged. No, I won't be because I think I'm right. <laughs> yeah. right. I would pray for Susie. A trail's broken, the car don't start. That, those are very important things to pray about. But I never hear pray for Susie. I want her to be saved. Mm-hmm. That's what we need. I I and I said, you people are not like that. But there is we need to learn. I need to learn more every day about prayer. Mm-hmm. I haven't arrived anywhere. It's good. But see the first thing you know. Okay. Psalm 90, verse 12. So teach us to number our days. That we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. I put down a, a, B, C, and D. Real quick. A is time will flee from us. Right. Yeah. Sister Cole was just a young lady and she taught three of my kids. Now we have grandkids older, their age older than my three kids were. Time flies. Mm-hmm. I put in things, putting things off until some other time. Today, a sister came to the passage and gave me a saying. Uh, let me read. I think I have. I wasn't going to because I have remember us that one of my favorite subjects to talk about is procrastination. Okay, here we go. I think I wrote it down. My wife wrote it. It's, it's not only human, but it's, it's, it's got some truth to it. Procrastination is a crime that always leads to sorrow. I can stop at any time. I think I'll do it tomorrow. <laughs> some people are going to be seven because of procrastination. Right. Today is the day of salvation. Amen. I had a, an older gentleman, his wife was a member of the church, and I pastored her. Every time I was visiting, he was the nicest fellow. He came to my house at eight. He came to our church once. And, but everything was preaching, you were right. I would call him by his first name, and I would say, Donald, uh, you told me yourself, you're not probably going to preach on that. 
And he used to say, but I can buy my tent and I'm doing it someday. And on and on. And uh, his wife said, he really likes you, but I said, please keep coming. So I visited him. We have coffee. He taught me a lot about God and so forth and so on. But it was always tomorrow, tomorrow. But I'm glad now. I left that church. The Lord had me move on. But I heard through the province of God, Brother Matthew Smart and others, that he got right with God. Praise His son in law called me one day, no jealousy there. His son in law called me and said, Brother Cassian, I want you to know my father in law got saved. I went to visit him. There, I wasn't his pastor, no more his wife's pastor. They called me years later and I went to Kentucky from Indiana and I preached his freedom. I preached him to heaven. But I'm going to tell you, Donald Irving just made it a couple of months before because his aneurysm burst and they were flying, remember, Sister Cassian? They were flying a helicopter him from Cartage, uh, not Cartage, Rushville, Indiana to Indianapolis, and I heard the surgeon said, family, he said, who are you? I said, I'm, I'm his wife's pastor. He said, please pray for this family. He said, he won't make it to the Indianapolis from Rushville. He said, his aneurysm burst, it's leaking. And he said, nine out of 10, don't make it to the operating room. They called at the operating room, ready to rush his family was in tears. My wife hugged both of them. I mean, it was, he has a big family, a lot of good children and grandchildren. He made it the first, for about two days, he was out of it. I went to visit him. I said, Donald, God has spared your life. He said, I know, preaching. I never saw Donald Irving in tears. Mm -hmm. Anyway, but he waited to the last, uh, the last mile of the way. Some, some don't wait. Mm -hmm. I just want to tell you, if you need to be saved, today is the day of salvation. Amen. If you need to be sanctified, God gave you life. He's been dealing with you. Seek holiness. Yes. We don't know what tomorrow will bring. That's right. Amen. I, under that, we can be teachers the number of days. Occupy our, our, our time. I put, there's a lot of trifles, little trinkets, little, I like to keep this. I like to get a pile of junk wood or a pallet, and I like to make things out. I gotta be careful that the devil doesn't use that to rob me of quality time. Mm -hmm. It's okay to go to the house. Like, but sometimes I have to say, you know, the enemy says, spend more time. No, it's time to do something else that's more fruitful. Mm -hmm. I love to play with wood. I'm not a carpenter. I'm a butcher carpenter. You know what I was <laughs> occupying that time with the tribes. So, brother, I was senior. I heard him say this, and I wrote it down. I use it one of my once in a while. I think it fits now. Did you know that a good thing can become a bad thing right. if it keeps us from the only thing? Right. A good thing can become a bad thing if it keeps us from the only thing. Right. That's good. I have to be careful of that. Amen. Occupy that time. I put here, teach us to number of days, close minded. All right. Number, where are we? Number seven. Job chapter six, verse 24. Teach me, and I will hold my tongue. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that. Mm -hmm. And cause me to understand wherein I have heard. I think the old English E R E R R E D means where I have mistaken, where I have fumbled. So say, but if I said, do you ever do this? I have done it from, from time to time. I said, Lord, forgive me. Lord. Sometimes we're too quick with this. Mm -hmm. right. That's right. I'm not talking about lipstick. I hope you don't wear lipstick. <laughs> right. I'm talking about this. Sometimes this gets human beings in trouble. Mm -hmm. That's right. And the, the job it says, let me teach me and I will hold my tongue. So I put down A, B, and C. A is. Don't say anything that you might regret later. Say, but if you even slipped out, well, the Lord knows when it slips out. I think it slips out to some people more than it should. So I didn't mean it. The devil made me do it. I know. <laughs> then I put, don't speak in haste when you're upset. Let me give you one example. Somebody I have a lot of confidence in. One time I was with this person, and they received a letter from somebody. And they told me the essence, we're very close, they told me the essence of the letter. I said, brother, I feel sorry for you. What are you going to do about it? I didn't want to do anything, but I just said, here's what he said, I never forgot him. He's one of my spiritual here. He said, brother Castellino, just pray for me. I'm not going to answer the letter today because I'm upset what the letter said. And I love the person who wrote the letter, my brother. Did you get that? That's he good. said, I'm going to answer someone today when I'm not so upset. And he did. And they're still friends and everything. So he said, if I, he said, if I write a letter today, I might say something that I might regret later. I like that. Right. 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 You want to know this? I can't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> so the next one is, don't say anything you regret. Don't speak.
feet in haste when you're upset. And I put the sacrifice of silence. I need to look. Sometimes silence. Say, what it does with you? I'll just give you one example. Only one, Sister Yasmin. Okay. I was somewhere in this universe as a minister. And a person came to me. Actually, I was in the basement of some place, cleaning up, you know, basement flood. And a man came to me and said, Call me by name. He said, I want to talk to you. I said, Sure. And here's what he said. He said, You're the nicest person, the best person in the world. You're the handsome, you're the smartest, you're the most. Big. No, he didn't. He called me everything you can think of. He said, You're this, you're this, you're that, which I'm not going to tell you. You're this, you're this, you're that. I'll tell you, it was so bad that when I got back to the parsonage, my son happened to be, my son Peter is my body in law. I don't ask him to be, he just wants to be. And he said, Dad, somebody upset me. He didn't even know. I said, Everything's okay. This. He said, Why is your face so red? I was so upset. He said, Can I go talk to the weather? I said, No, son, don't worry about it. Because in his, he might have done or said something he might have regret. I knew that. He's my son. But even if I talk back to one, I know one of your boys. If I talk back to one of your boys, I think that at least I'm, hey, they're both big. I'm not one of these big. I ain't messing around with him. You think I'm dumb? What's his name? The one we know. What's his name? The one we know. Daddy. Daddy. I'm not messing around. But let's make believe I did and said some things about what England did. I think he would say, listen, shorty. <laughs> you're fortunate I'm a Christian because I can pick you up and break your neck. But I ain't done. I'm not going to talk about what England in front of his son. All behind his back. You want to say what I'm doing Good. Anyway, he said all these things. Do you know what I had at the tip of my tongue? He said, what do you mean? That's temptation, not sin. There was a time, I don't know if I would have done anything physical, I would have defended that, but there was a time before I was a Christian, when I had the afro, remember the afro? Okay. The muscles, they weren't big, but they were there. Now, I don't even know if they're there anymore. There was a time I would say, listen, buddy, you want to step outside? It was, this guy said, no. There was a time I would have done that. I said, well, he told me everything he told him. I said, well, if that's your opinion, you know, pray for me. And life went on. But if I would have done something that day, I probably would have to apologize to the Lord first, mm -hmm. to him. And it might have messed up my life spiritually. Mm -hmm. I would have been a better example to my church, to my wife. You, you getting anything out of this? It's good. Amen. Right. Praise the Lord. Job 6 24. Let me repeat that. Teach me. I'm learning. Teach me. And I will hold my tongue. Mm -hmm. The sacrifice of son. It's, it takes sacrifice and determination sometimes. Jesus never ridiculed. They called him every name in the book. Uh, most of that, the way I read it, but when you tell them, the way I read it, once in a while he says that, he mainly kept silence. Mm -hmm. Say, but it doesn't mean you don't know what they did to me. I know I can tell you some other things they did to me. And then we'll find each other's shoulder, we'll be at the midnight, and we'll both be disturbed. We need to make you do that. Okay? Yeah? Pray for them. Pray for your enemies. Amen. I, it's not pleasant if somebody says something about Sister Castellino. There was a time I said, hey, watch it, that's my honey. <laughs> now we pray for you. Big switch, turn around. Lord, teach me to hold my... I think if we learn as a whole, churches, if we learn more to hold our tongue, we just might have less, can I call it, friction? Right. Okay, and I think we understand that. Next one. Good. Psalm 32 8. I will instruct thee in the, and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with my eye. We used to tell our children, Okay, you can go to the mailbox. I'm watching. We lived in the city. 53,000 people. One square mile. Crying. You know, I went out one day. I bought a new car. A few days later, I went out. And the window was broken. My door back. You know, we lived. So I used to say, you can go to your friend's house. Let's say three. But mommy or daddy will watch you. The Lord says, <clears throat> he will guide us in this life. What is that? I like a God's eyes on me. Right. Right. You've got me. But uh, my wife sometimes has to go to the car. Every day she does, I usually do. She said, honey, it's dark. Open the door instead. So I opened the door instead. They're like, no, I don't do that. <laughs> I'm not dumb. If a, if a wise guy came, I couldn't do nothing. But I do watch him. If the Lord said, I'm watching you. He watched, he guides us with our eye when there's nobody around. In the middle of the night, the tears come out. And we pray for lost loved ones. He watches us when we go through paths that nobody knows about. He watches us when we live distress, when we live some distress. It's all about I like that God's eye. It's on me, but it's on you also. Right. So I put down here, Amy. Listen to the still small voice of the Spirit. He can see us 
when we're perplexed, concerned, confused, and he can make things clear. He watches us and he says, Peter Casalino, today he needs me more than six months ago. I'm going to help him today. He needs a little help. He's a little confused right now. He's a little discovered. He comes to my rescue. I, I praise his name for that. Amen. The last one, all the people said, Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Psalm 119. <laughs> Psalm 119, verse 108. Except I beseech thee, the free will of my offerings, of my mouth, O Lord, and teach me thy judgment. A, B, and C. We want to know what God requires of us. I want to know what God requires of us. We need to know the whole counsel of God. Good. I'm thinking of one person only, but there's many more. One person said to me, my wife once, did you ask? No. We're not going to discourage anybody. A minister's wife said this once, but they could. I think you're going to agree with me. We may not agree what flavor of coffee, but we're going to agree with this for sure. She said, I don't read the Old Testament. She was a preacher's wife. I just read the New Testament. I mean, a uh, minister's wife uh, saved many years. I, I don't touch the Old Testament. I don't read it because I just read the New Testament. That's what my husband is a preacher. The whole council of the right. Amen. Amen. That's good. Amen. That's you want to say, I didn't say anything. I said, please let the Lord. Now, if she asked me my opinion, I'm going to tell her. We want to know what God requires. But we need to know the whole counsel of God. <clears throat> and we want to know the consequences of sin. I preach from time to time to youth camps or youth, young people. And one of my favorite messages, because I think they need it, is the consequences. If I knew the consequences of sin, I wouldn't have committed many sins. I still would have been a sinner. I still would have needed to be saved. But me and Sister Gasolina would not have committed the sins we committed because I didn't know there's consequences for sin. Right. We try to talk to young people that special. But even middle-aged people, there are sins that were England, God has forgiven me and they're under the blood. But every once in a while the devil said, well, even much, what is that? No, it's a scar up here and in here. But they are forgiven. Praise the Lord. Thank you. What are you talking about tonight? <clears throat> I'm talking about the need for the... Some people say, well, I don't like to be taught by this teacher, that teacher, that teacher. That's fine. But I hope, I trust, and I pray that you want to be taught. You're willing to be taught and learn of God. Amen. I want to be taught of God. Right. Tomorrow, I want to know more about the Lord than I know today. Say, you don't know much. It's a little more than yesterday. But you don't know as much as the other. I know, but it's more than I knew. 1990, July 15th, when I got saved. Right. By the time I go to heaven, it takes me... Oh, Jesus comes. I, every day, I want to know more about the Lord. Right. I knew Sister Castellino you know, when she was 17. And then she was a kid, a teenager. And I was a man. Remember that? When I said that? Okay. We didn't know each other. We got to know each other. We grew up together. I know more today than I did years ago. She knows me more today than she knew me when she was 18, 17, and I was 22. But did you know next year, Lord, really, if we, we know each other even more? We are so good, I can stand in the pulpit and preach. I, I said this one day, and the next day she did it, we preach on it. I can, when you can't tell us, this guy's going to move this. A thousand of an inch. You know what a thousand of an inch is? You copy this? She can move it and tell me when, you know, she, something's not right. You know, wives do that. And nobody else can, oh, she could go like this, and I know what it means. She could do it. She's better, you know, the first base coach, the third base coach, and baseball. She's better than that. Okay, we know each other. But did you know 10 years from now, if we're still in this life, we'll know each other more? Right. I want to know the Lord more. He knows all about me. It's me that's got to know Him and His Word. He already knows everything about me. And He loves me anyway. Amen. He knows everything about you. And He loves me. He knows everything about the people we're praying for in this revival. In Africa. And He loves the many men. Amen. Amen. Right. That's what I love about the Lord. Thank Some people Lord. know me, love me. And then they get to know me. They don't say it, but they act in a way that maybe they don't love me anymore. Because they're not my wife or my children or my grandchildren. The Lord knows everything about me and loves me anyway. Right. Praise yeah. the Lord. Yeah. I don't even know what else to say except God loves you but be teachable. Mm -hmm. on, the, on the way to heaven, I want to learn more of God. If I don't learn, other, I want to learn as much as I can about everything. But the most important thing in my life is, Lord, I want to know your will for my life. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Thank God. Thank God. Thank you, Brother Castellino. Let's stand together. Thank God. We're, we're students on our way to heaven. Thank God. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for a desire.
desire to learn more and more and more about you. We thank you for a heart that pants after God, even as the deer pant after the water grows. We pray that you'll teach us your way, teach us your will. May our hearts be so tender and so, so pliable in your hands that we may learn to know you more and more. We thank you for your truth. May it be hidden within our hearts. Bless your people. We pray you'll go with us tonight. Give traveling mercy. Some are traveling uh, many miles. We pray that your hand shall be upon them. Get glory to your name, and we'll give you praise in Christ's name. Amen.